welcome back to New York City, where we're incredibly excited to see GAM Esports and the VCS return to the world's group stage after three long yeah. years. And they step on stage to battle against top esports. But let's let's start with this VCS Flashback. squad in GAM. People will remember them as the Gigabyte Marines, but as one of the most exciting squads to step on to the world's stage in their creativity and their strategies. Yeah, that was a level six Nocturne at 520. Uh, they also arrived at Worlds 2019, didn't make it through, had so many complications with COVID to not be able to make it to Worlds that they would have otherwise qualified for. Even winning Spring Split, having to partake in a different tournament that wasn't MSI, not being able to have their international showing there, finally coming back here. And the fact that Levi has left and come back to return again, it's just so cool. It's uh, it's great, honestly, to have them back in international competition because Gam was a roster that always turned heads. They yes. were players that always drew attention and people would underestimate them. And then they would come in and they would create chaos in a group. And while, yes, they are yet to make it to the quarterfinals at an international event, it feels like that these players in this region over the years has only gotten better, but they haven't had that opportunity to prove it. But now, three years later after 2019, here they are. Unfortunately for them, they're going up against a team <laughs> looking to prove themselves on the international stage as well. Yeah, it's a tough way to get re introduced to the international competition after three years on the sidelines going up against top esports out of the LPL. And this is an organization, the last time that we saw them was two years ago, a 2020 Worlds. They were favored to win the whole thing. And then after a shaky group stage, nearly being beaten by Fnatic in the quarterfinals to then be defeated by Suning. Yeah. Overall, it was an underperformance from the roster and organization to then not even make it in 2021. They're looking to prove that they are a world contender and they are some of the best players in the world. You already mentioned Levi and how great it is to have him back on this GAM squad and representing the VCS. And of course, that's going to be the matchup that we're going to focus in on. Levi up there against Tien on the side of top esports. Uh, typically, you look at Levi to be the playmaker. Most people are going to finally remember his Lee Sin. Of course, that Nocturne that we showed in the highlights, but it's all about individual playmaking and setting up his team for success. Yeah, and the 377 damage per minute that you see there on the second line, that's extremely high for a jungler. Oftentimes, historically, that level of damage share from your jungler doesn't translate the best to international play when right. lanes are so much more demanding. And I'd say Tian, even though he is a former world champion, didn't have the most explosive year in the LPL, but it's also incredibly stacked at that position, so still going to be a very interesting matchup between these two. And let's not forget, Tian is coming in as the summer MVP for the LPL, and why it was a contentious vote. This man overall is considered by by many in a very debatable subject as the best jungler yeah. coming into the tournament. And I think that he's a player that we have to keep our eyes on going in because last year on FPX, they bombed out. They failed to make it out of that group and it was a shocking performance the world over. I like that. You're tactically uh, acknowledging the debate and not taking a stance in it. Oh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I acknowledge that there's a lot of debate and let's just take the facts that he's the summer MVP. Yeah. I think Tian is very yeah. good. <laughs> Even if there's a debate and you could say that someone else should have won, he's still going to be the MVP or second or third, yeah, right? Yeah. Somewhere it's up still going to be an insanely powerful player. And Absolutely. I think what's crazy is that last year on FPX, he was a large part of why I think they struggled, right? The environment, the team wasn't coming together. And the fact that they did fall apart was a surprise to many. To see him now thrive on a roster that is top esports, one that is stacked with individual talent, I think... Many LPL fans, many fans across the world are excited to see this roster come together because let's not forget, alongside Tian is now Knight, the player that yeah. everyone expected to really pop off at Worlds 2020, and then he just didn't. He was like, this is all you've kind of got. And while he was good, I think that people are still waiting to be really wowed by the player who, let's not forget, in Champions Q is averaging, what, 3.3k DPM in that one Silas game? Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. man's got a lot to prove and we're excited to see him I play. I don't even know together. how you get to a number. I don't know either. <laughs> it's like, that's like just the enemy team just stacks for you. And like, yeah, keep putting AOE MF faults over the cross, over the cross at the top of us. So these are our final two teams who will be making their debut on the world stage here in a game that's just about to take place. It's GAM Esports, it's Top Esports. Let's get down to the stage. Let's meet our teams.
As Dash said, it's time for the final two teams to make their world's 2022 debut. First, from China's LPL, with titans of the game across the rift, it's Top Esports! <laughs> Since the VCS team has been here at the world's group stage, but now they're back and here to take on all comers. It's Vietnam's Gami Sports! <laughs> All right, here we are, gentlemen. It's time to get into it. Our last two debuting teams here for Worlds 2022. And uh, I know, Lyric, you have a lot of experience with one of them, and none of us have a lot of experience with uh, Game Esports at all. Um, at, like, for a really, really, really long time. I'm super happy um, that the VCS is back, of course. At MSI, we got Saigon Buffalo. I think a lot of people really enjoyed what that team showed in terms of creativity. But let's not forget that domestically, um, GAM demolished them. Consistently, yep. they demolished everyone in their home region. And I can't wait to see what they'll do at a tournament. The one issue is that they are playing against top. Yeah, and I mean, right, going back all the way to 2019, GAM have always had top, like top two finishes, usually first. I've had a couple seconds sprinkled in, but like you said, top esports, an absolute beast of a team to have to go against. It's absolutely right, they're gonna have to go against them right now. Here we are into Champion Select for their first match here at Worlds. Nocturne already taken away from Levi, and uh, we can segue into some champion pools here, guys. You immediately see the smiles from the coaches <laughs> and the players <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, we, we weren't gonna get that one. I also like now the respect coming out from Gam up against Knight. Uh, there's a bit of meme in the Chinese community that if Knight thinks he's better than you, he will style on you. If he respects you, he will not play that well. Gam showing the respect to Knight, who has popped off against KD in Champions Q lately, so I like that. Yep. Uh, Silas is also like pretty busted right now, so I think it's just worthy, worthy Double of a minute, just in general. Exactly. Caitlyn, not going to be seen. I really like the Aatrox, but I find it weird that it's banned on the blue side. And we'll have to see what uh, top esports have in mind for that first pick, because the Maokai has been taken away. And uh, I was taught by uh, James Dash Patterson that Maokai is just the most broken champion in the history of the universe right now. And uh, I, I, uh, oh. I would agree, but here is a cat. Let's see where the game esports have themselves an answer for this one. I will say for the side of TS, you're also one of the teams who look incredibly happy in things like the Sibir Yumi meta Jacula was absolutely popping off. So huge pickup for the side of TES. But now looking over to <laughs> looking over to GAM, they were one of the most creative teams in the VCS. Does it get locked in? Oh, of course it does. It has to. Oh no. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry, that was me. That, that was, was you. 100% okay. me. I believed, and then, of course, it was going to be denied. Yeah. We'll forgive you for that one, Atlas. Um, I mean, I mean uh, I Metal Horse is actually still pretty cool. I wouldn't even mind. Okay, never mind. I was saying, I wouldn't mind a Pike lock-in later on. I do think that without Nady Carry Darren, lock-in in Pike can uh, definitely backfire. But we're going to get very early on the rail here for BN. He was such a big part. Um, what made GAM Esports such an incredible force to be reckoned with domestically. Before he joined the roster, uh, they looked overall pretty okay. Not, uh, not really amazing, but after he joined, their win rate skyrocketed. So the early prio on the rail here, uh, very understandable. Yeah, I've seen Sivayumi locked in as the first two picks before. Um, that was a pretty comfortable victory yesterday. And we'll see whether Top Esports is going to have a repeat of that one. I like denying the Poppy as sort of that answer to Yumi by just picking it yourself. I think it's kind of awesome. But Tristana Rel has a lot of power in the early stages of the game. 
And this could be something that Gam Esports can play through. And that's what, that's what we're already been looking for, right? Is them to try and set behind that ball lane coming out from the side of TS. I will say over in the VCS, Gam, we're a lot more of a team who they won't necessarily always find the early leads or go crazy like Saigon Buffaloes were doing, but they were the best team fighters in the region by far. So a lot of power there, but like you were just hitting on Alice to Poppy, the Poppy can prevent a lot of that, especially with the champions that Gamma picked up so far. I'm also hoping that we're gonna see a counter pick saved here for Kiaya. He, to me, together with Leva, are some of the most interesting cool parts of this team. Their top side 2v2, I think, is incredibly strong. And with that R5 counter pick, maybe we can see them find an angle there. I also think just using that to go and get TS, that Wayward, Wayward's a rookie coming onto the international stage this year. He was one of the weaker parts of TS. I won't say weakness because he's still incredibly good, but if there is someone on the side of Top Esports he can punish, it would be Wayward. Well, we'll see whether they can do that here on the side of Gam. As we have got through the bands, it was Rise Renekton banned on the blue side. Oh. Interesting, and there's the Syndra, not quite reworked just yet. Um, and the Azir and Akali were banned away, so not going to have those options. Goes for something a little bit more tried and true. And there is definitely, like, I'm starting to feel it, you know? Like, we just want to fight you in the mid game all the time. And I think this comp's kind of starting to work there. Yeah, I think it, it looks good, right? That they have the range available, the aggression going to be able to come out in the mid lane. It also is a bit of a, a takeaway from Knight. He was a huge Ginger player. And it might not be something that's a staple in the meta right now, but RNG did bring it out uh, earlier on. This would be a counter pick. Oh my, this would be a lot of fun as well. Will Knight do it? He's there's smiling. a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of smiles. I don't know whether that means that he's joking. I hope that it doesn't. Because we need to see this. Oh no. That's, I mean, that's again, the only corner right. break we it's like you. to see. Again, <laughs> again, Atlas. Don't Ooh. talk about that. And overall, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not uh, doing it. No, we're not doing it. We're, we're no. talking about the we're talking about the TS comp. I, I really like the fact that Yasuo has used his counter pick to Nara in the past. I really like Ari and Poppy. I think it's very strong in terms of finding picks in the mid game. Oh. Yep. I didn't do it. Yes, you did. No, I did not. We have the same hair. You were thinking it. You know. <laughs> oh no. We should not have started the high find. <laughs> I can never get away with anything anymore. <laughs> Well, Jack's going to be locked in, and we're not going to have too much uh, as far as interesting picks are concerned. I but mean, still. the Ari we haven't seen so much, and uh, Syndra going to be coming out as well. So the mid lane kind of saving it. Um, I hope you'll forgive us for the U. You know, the, to me, that's the exciting part, right? We have this matchup coming out in the mid lane. Syndra's such an aggressive champion. You can look for those out trades tonight. I think going to be waiting to that level six mark when you have the mobility to try to dodge out on the stun. But for Gam, right, a lot of early and mid-game aggression coming through with mid and bot. You have the Jax to scale and play for later on. And for the side of TS, I'm very curious to see how this one works out because a bit more scaling oriented, but you still have the Ari to set up some pick potential. And on the side of Gam, I think you want to spend a lot of time in that bot side. Tristan, Arel, incredible power. Um, and if you can snowball those and you can continuously forward hard engages in the mid game, can become very hard for the Silver Yumi to ever reach critical mass. Yeah, and that's uh, exactly what TES need to try and do in this game, right? It's about weathering the storm to allow those ricochets to just destroy the entire team. Whereas over the other side, I mean, theoretically, if you start drawing a beat enough, Tristana can also scale very, very far into the game. However, not with quite as much of that. 5v5, that means we're going to be looking towards that top side, looking towards Kiaya to see whether that Jax is going to work out here for the VCS squad. And we have to, like, I, we need to hammer home just how successful this team is domestically, right? As we hop onto the rift here for this game, Gam Esports haven't got below second place in the past, like, four, five splits. Also, Katie, ever since he started playing, he's won six out of eight of the playoff finals that he's been in and also has been in one every single time. Also, Prime Gaming is giving away 150,000 RP. Ladies and gentlemen, several lucky fans every single day of Worlds. Head over to primegamingworlds22.com to enter and make sure to put in today's secret code to get bonus entries. For more information, you can use exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. Minions have spawned. And I want to highlight not just GAM, uh, but the VCS as a whole. We've seen that um, even LCK organizations, <laughs> as uh, oh, Levi <laughs> having a bit of a giggle, 
um, have started signing Vietnamese players. We saw the first Vietnamese player debut in the LCK Academy League, or in Challengers, rather. Um, we've yeah. seen Gen G in particular also really invest heavily into the scene. And actually having them back at Worlds, having them, uh, or giving the uh, them the opportunity, rather, to take on all the teams at Worlds, I think it's just, it's such a monumental moment. And I think especially when we look at what Saigon Buffalo was able to do and how much of a fight they were able to put up against a lot of teams, Gam coming in as the first seed oh, yeah. for a team that I've heard a lot of people actually have a surprising amount of faith in. Even looking at their draft, we kind of talked about how they want to set up their bot side. We can already see Levi pathing down there right now. But yeah. one thing I like is style. I think some nice trades. Gam, I think, already setting up for this. You can see KD just putting that ward down towards the bottom side. And and the crash this action through. isn't going to stop. Yeah, exactly. And I know like, it's not necessarily a play-by-play -play moment, but uh, it was starting to get a little bit dicey there. It was getting dicey. Um, so I had to try and jump in as best I could. But gentlemen, no, no, no. You take, take it back away. Um, I'll try to be oh, a little bit more... If you, if you, if you have something to say, Atlas, then <laughs> feel free. No, no, no. It's about whether they've got something to play, not about whether I have something to say. I was, was interrupted. <laughs> it was uh, very, very rude of me. But here we are. Checking out all of the lanes as Prowling Projectile being frustrating on the bottom side of the map. We're trying to avoid looking at that one too much. In the mid lane's definitely going to be interesting because we haven't seen so much of the good old Ari Syndra for a while. Used to be a matchup we saw a fair bit, um, has since oh. fallen off, but Levi's lying in wait as the Poro Sejuani. Tien's going to get to the bad news here as the Steadfast Presence will give him some movement speed, but just waits it out. Does Levi, is this going to be a First Blood solo kill? Not quite yet. As Tien's gonna what? have to back. Oh, he looks what? back! What are we doing? Okay, not gonna blow the flash. He is going to be absolutely fine, but it looks like this red steel should come through. Levi is completely bullying and decimating the summer MVP of the LPL. Oh, he's going in. Yeah, it gets the smite as well. Okay, PA's going to be coming over here also. So uh, yeah, Game Esports off to a pretty good start. And it's not only that style and BA move over, but also notice in mid lane, Katie also making his way towards in case there was a possible collapse, in case there was an actual fight. And early on, Game Esports back at Worlds, and uh, that's a pretty convincing opener. Yeah, and uh, what was the way that this uh, sort of the, the poppy jungle, how was that attack last time around? It was about attacking the early game and denying the path that you wanted to take. And uh, once again, it's going to be Levi doing it and disrupting Tien and what he wants to get done this I time. also think just the prep against TS individually is really good because we saw in most of their losses, if it wasn't them throwing a late game lead, it came from setting Tien behind early. But Tien now wanting to see if he can make anything happen in the zone, but Katie's gonna fall for it. I'm really, <laughs> it's really, Interesting that you're like setting up TES as throwing a leg at lead as Kiaya gets a little uh, little in danger, but will be fine in the end. Because that is, it's kind of a given that they get ahead early. So it's yeah. just about whether they throw the lead or not. But wow. still, when the few times they did fall behind early and lose, it was about setting Tien behind. So Gam, I think, doing a great job of scouting out uh, top esports strengths and how they like to play in the early game. Well, I mean, to TS's credit, you can't throw a lead if you don't have one. So there we go. Uh, oh. strategy here, guys. It's, uh, it's a bit of that five head type situation. However, they do still have a lead, um, largely because of just killing minions just slightly better, although it doesn't really mean anything right now. Tune of about 100, not going to really write home about it. And with, uh, I think, particularly on the uh, top half of the map, uh, specifically the top and jungle 2v2, any big lead that can be found there can be very, very explosive, right? If you do get ahead on things like the Sejuani and the Jax, you can just continuously jump in, find a favorable trade, and get out again. Um, and that 2v2, able to get the permafrost on very, very quickly, you can find a big lead for Kiaya. And as you pointed out, like, attack wayward, not that it's an easy task, but might also be another opening here for Gam. That's actually why I like Gam's draft just overall. Like, you can attack any lane, you can play toward yeah. jungle, set Tien behind. And looking at the side, looking at Tez, all you can really do is Tien is kind of shadow your lanes, make sure Gam isn't able to find those opportunities and try and play off mistakes, but they might have caught out KD. Yeah, they in fact do. The flash immediately comes out. Tien not going to be able to get around there to influence this one, but Gam is just going to be able to take themselves a Drake 
and it should be just the flash from the Syndra going missing. And now, that is still a bit of a disaster here again because Syndra relies on that a lot for a lot of playmaking as uh, Saigon Buffalo's call out there from Beer. We like that one a lot, Boomerang. It's come forward. They're not actually going to be able to stop the rail from making it back to the tower. And now it is, I think, up to Levi to make sure that they keep proper track of where Tian is because if he can find an angle on KD, uh, and KD is not able to find himself a shatter, then uh, you, you just kind of die. There's not a lot of counterplay, especially into an Ari who can go for a flash uh, charm. Not a lot of things you can do about that, so uh, kind of a window here for top esports and a possible way for them to really start accelerating the way that we know that this team excels at. Especially yeah. with the fact that Knight does have the unsealed spellbook, so you can see right now having the Ignite online, even just kind of adding that little bit more threat onto KD in the mid lane. Well. See whether he can actually capitalize. Of course, quarter of that flash cooldown has now been used up, so you're gonna have to get over there and start trying to do something as soon as they can. So far, if you uh, have a look at the CS, it's only really the top lane that is really standing out to me. Um, style looking for a bit of a back timer here, which is why he's um, starting to fall a bit behind. And of course, Jackie Love and Mark laning extremely well uh, into the Rel Tristana, which was picked into this, right? And we do see there, as we've seen already with Silver Yumi's in this tournament, that even if you get some good trades early, if you don't find an actual all-in, this lane is super obnoxious to play into. Silver, even after the nerf, still has an incredible amount of shove, and combined with the harass from a Yumi, can become very, very difficult to ever get out, and then you kind of get stuck underneath your turret, uh, and it becomes really, really tough to ever find a good back time without giving anything up. And, you know, with that, for TS playing the Sivir, I think a lot of people, like with League of Legends, you have the most recent memory in mind. A lot of people are gonna think of Jackie Love with that finals and kind of the, the dash in which ended up with TS losing, but he really was just standout carry in LPL Summer. But Gam, maybe looking yeah. to contest. If I over the wall here, actually gonna hold off Ooh. for a moment, buying some space for Kiaya to get forward. Katie and BA just standing alongside TS have this one low, and it looks like Gam are going to give it up, and they will do so. Not going to lose anyone in the process. Of style a little bit late to the party. And that was the big thing, right? Just the, that prio coming in from the Super Yumi that Kirk Chronicler was just hitting on, able to push in those waves to make sure that play was able to come through. And for TS, I mean, it seems like they're completely fine with how the pace of this early game's going with the draft they have. But Gam, go down. Yeah, immediate flash there from B to start this one up. But the final chapter is fantastic. First blood to be picked up for Jackie Love of all people. And they're not done there. It's a double for Knight and a double for Jackie. Oh, man. Top Esports. It was a slow start. I was about to start talking about the fact that there's a, a bit of a lull state in this one. And then all of a sudden, the game explodes. And Tian, that poppy. How many times today are we going to see multiple people get trapped by a stat first presence? The value of that absolutely insane in that play. And Gam try to catch top esports off guard. Doesn't end up working out. Yeah, I think Gam were thinking only a couple members would be rotating down to that bottom lane. But look how many ultimates come through. Marks especially doing so much to lock the members of Gam down. And I mean, this play was so explosive, you really don't even have time. They were there and then they weren't, boys. As Knight looking ecstatic after that play coming through. Out of nowhere, we're almost up to a 3k gold lead for TES. And literally out of nowhere, because the gold was entirely even as Gam entered that brush. Like, we have a crack in Slayer and Jackie Love now. Yeah, no, it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. I looked at my hands before and I thought there was a game and, and it was an illusion. It was not actually. It was not on there. I do like this creativity Ooh. coming out from Gam, wanting to punish. Jackie Love didn't blow the flash before, but doesn't have the cleanse anymore. Ooh. He's trying to he, see I, whether I the game was coming back. I was glancing at the hands, but Jackie Love's got that spell shield. Like you talk about, Tian's going to move on in here as well. Oh, I have feel a feeling they know. They absolutely know what's going on. Prowling Projectile gets the news. That's a fantastic spell shield. Steadfast presence to deny everyone any exit from this situation. Levi going to have to book it to get himself out of there. Tian just flashing forward with that heroic charge. On top of it, the double stair to come forward with the final chapter. And it's another two to be picked up this time for the bottom lane of TES.
GAM Esports back at Worlds and Top Esports says, hello, <laughs> welcome. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to give you an easy time because that was a masterful read from Top. It was great, right? I mean, again, the steadfast presence coming out from Tien. I like that they also waited Mark's ultimate able to catch people out. And now going to get a ton of gold onto Jackie Love when this comp is built around him. You can even see on the minimap them forcing their way in, getting some vision down. And with Dragon now up on the board, I'm curious to see if Top pivot or if Gam are able to use this bit of window they have coming back on the map to try and get that one for themselves. So, Lyric, I want to go back uh, to something you said there. <laughs> Tell me more about top throwing leads, because right now it's 11 and a half minutes, and um, I'm not seeing a lot of windows. You know, I, I just want to say, Game 5, LPL Finals, TS, uh -huh. JDG, a lot of people believe TS should have won that one before Jackie Love decided to dash in pretty much the whole of JDG. This week. It was so great, right? You can just tell they had the idea that they were down here. The steadfast presence was so nice. Levi buys a bit of time with his ult to, to keep Tien down. We see the heal come out, and then once Mark's ult comes out, they lock two members down and pick up these kills quite easily. Yeah, there are just too many options, but we've got a bit of a fight here. Hex Drake going to be going down very, very low. Picked up there by Tien, and now the fight is on. Steadfast presence again, getting amazing value. Wait! It's going to be taken down. It's a double kill. The resets are coming forward for Style. But Knight says absolutely not today. This time, we are going to be winning this team fight, and now Katie is in a whole bunch of trouble. Nice denial there, but even the prowling projectile is doing way too much now that this uh, last chapter has been picked up. And TES is going to be able to walk away with Drake and a one-team fight. Still, Style getting some kills on the board. I mean, for Gam, with how far they're falling behind, I feel like this is a fight you will take. You can see TS in a favorable position. The charm comes out, but BA being able to bring in TN. We can see nice damage coming out because they aren't able to get on the Tristana. And so it's like, hey, actually, I'm going to get in your face. But it's Knight here with the flash in to guarantee the first kill. And once again, Yumi, just such a nuisance. Yeah, I really want to highlight as well. I know it's we always meme about Yumi and how the champion has no skill expression, but I've seen Miss Yumi Ultimate. Oh, yes. But not in this game. And not from Mark. Right. Here we oh. go again. Yep, someone's dead yet again. This time, they belong to TS as Wayward is going to fall down. His first involvement, and uh, it's the wrong way around. However, this game is far from over, and it's still a 5,000 gold lead for TS. But I like the game. Keep pulling the trigger over and over again. And it at least sets up potentially maybe for Kiaya to get a play. Here is nope. As we see, Knight going to TP to the top side to actually prevent that one. Plates are about to fall as well. So any bit of extra gold could have been nice. And now with the lead top esports have, I love that they're just running into Ooh, nice. Gam's jungle trying to steal <laughs> away these camps. But Levi going to be able to secure that one for himself. Yep, like that one a lot. Um, just says thanks for the help. He's going to be able to pick that one up. So top esports now pushing down this mid lane. Jackie Love does a lot of damage right now with this uh, these first two items that are on a much faster clip than I usually see. And he's been holding on it, to them for quite a while. It's 14 minutes. And yeah. It's Kraken Slayer and PD. Yeah. That's that's where we're at right now. Um, I mean, it's, PD it's not is necessarily... Kinda, it's kind of like two daggers crossing over, and uh, Style also has two daggers as well. He just needs to cross them over, and he's got item parry. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely fine. Style takes half of his health bar, incidentally, from Jackie Love existing in the same lane as him. That just doesn't seem fair at all. And he's going to back away. They do have a lot of vision in this area as Wayward. Not going to be able to steal that one away once again, Levi. Fantastic ability to secure uh, these jungle camps and scuttles, but it's just not going to be enough here to stop the tirade the TS have here towards the mid lane. Wayward able to escape this time, but uh, yeah, just not able to find anything on the cross map. And, and you already mentioned that, Atlas. I do want to highlight again the fact that. Gam keeps looking for openings is very good because if you don't do anything, I know we meme a lot about top esports and their ability to throw leads, but in a situation like this, if you just let the game go its normal course, uh, it's never going to happen. Like, there's just no way as Kiaya. Yeah, does manage to leap strike to relative safety, oh. but the stair is still going to come through. Just able to hop off and counter strike. Going to deny a little bit here as he turns, but it's not going to be enough. This Sivir is so incredibly fed. That's an Everfrost, Yumi. That's not fair. For oh a second, my goodness. For a second, I questioned myself. I was like, wait, I thought that was Jackie Love. Is this Knight? But no, Mark. <laughs> 
bringing the lockdown to make sure that any member is able to just run oh. Gam down. And Gam still trying to find that cross map, looking to punish Wayward. But Wayward with a, with a beautiful flash doesn't let the play come through. And sadly for Gam, top esports just getting further and further ahead, now even having the Rift Herald in pocket. Yeah, this is uh, starting to get a little bit absurd. And I do really like that Ever Everfrost uh, adaptation. I'm glad that you guys managed to figure it out. I just assume that it's going to be Ludens these days. Yeah. But I don't even bother looking at the items. And I definitely should continue to do so. As uh, Style just trying to find whatever minions that he can. Currently, they're in the mid lane as Knight. Wants some popcorn chickens, but he's not going to be able to secure all of them. Once again, Levi with his uh, secure of camps working out. Um, but Gam, I mean, I don't... It, they're, they're trying to find these options. You've mentioned it before, but they're just it just feels they're, so incredibly difficult. There's just not a lot because, except for Wayward, is, uh, yeah, yeah, right. he's going to go in, but that's what I'm talking about. He still has Flash, Ghost, and his ultimate, and his stopwatch. Like, uh, how you need to kill him basically like five times before you actually are able to get a kill, and that goes for everyone on TS. There's been so many, uh, I think, really strong itemization choices so that now, how are you ever going to find an angle with Scam? Yeah, I mean, things like Stopwatch is coming out, we can see in mid lane, the amount of mobility on the side of TS as well. Because I feel like ideally what Gam would want to do here is you kind of drop one lane and overload the opposite side of the map. Whoa. <laughs> Style almost just goes down to once again, Alice, Jackie Love just happened to be in the same area as him. But it feels like even, even if Gam do drop, let's say like bot wave, overload mid, that with things like Yumi ult, Sivir ult coming out, flashes up, that they just won't be able to guarantee the lockdown on TS's members to find the picks. Yeah, and uh, they're not even needing to group up for it or anything like that. Not even needing to play around the Naba that can be so useful if they want to be able to start some of these fights. Not to Wayward mention. has had to do nothing this game. No, exactly. No. I mean, even Jackulo's yeah. barely had to do anything. He just like throws boomerangs around, clears waves, he and then he ricochets and murders the enemy team. Yeah. I... It's, uh, it's not very fair. However, he is playing expertly, and his play in the early game has really set up for this. So far, Tian is going to be able to lock down their second Drake of the game. Infernal Soul, by the way. There's games where you're like, ah, oh, hold up. All right, Rocket Jump to get Style out to relative safety. Teleport to come forward. We're committing to a team fight here as the final chapter is going to come through. The exhaust on top of KD as well as Knight just dives into that back line. Great double knock up. The Rel's going to be taken down first. Levi taken down. There's the double kill for Jackie Love and now Gamma on the run. But can you escape the fleet? Footed Sivir, I don't think you can. You definitely cannot escape Knight, who is just rushing spiritually all over this map. There isn't even a major objective up for TS to turn this into. Just finding an opportunity where they're like, hey, Gam stepped a bit too far, and we don't like that. Ults come out, and now just reclaiming vision. This might be a pre 20 minute infinity edge for Jackie Love. Yeah, this seems like unnerfed Sivir, like release. Like, uh, reworked Sivir yeah. type situation and here. In a normal game state, this engage from Tess can backfire. I mean, BA had a good ultimate. Yeah, I mean, the Magna Storm was fantastic. Yeah, locked two people down. That's why Wayward ended up getting so low. Tien as well. It's sadly too much damage. And again, oh. the Boomerang Blades just uh, jumping around, killing the other members of Gam. Sadly, the damage just isn't there right now. And like we said, for TS, they just ended up turning this into a bit more vision. They were able to push in their waves a little bit more, but really nothing on the map for them to take. Baron will be up in 30 seconds, though, so that's something that's definitely going to be on top of esports mind. Yeah, I like how you're talking about the first spawn of the Baron being like, oh, yes, this is something that this Civic composition should definitely do. 20 minute Baron's fantastic. Rift Herald, you guys are going Yes, the IE! Yeah, we no, always have Death Cap. You, we're not even, it's not a facetious point. They definitely uh, should just go towards the Baron. And, I don't even and, think they need it. Yeah, well. Yeah. Maybe uh, Baron buff has been equated to Jackie Love having this many items this early. And we talk about Jackie Love a lot so far this game, but Tien has just been so extraordinarily good to make sure that his carries oh. are so strong. But here we go. Here's the flank play. Kiaya is going to move forward, spotted on that control ward. And uh, I don't think they're going to find the angle here. They need that element of surprise. And TS is going to back away intelligently. 9,000 gold approaching 10 is their lead right here. And uh, Scatter the Weak probably shouldn't even stun TES anymore because they are definitely not weak. It is just not a thing. They are going to dive forward here as well as the final chapter looking completely broken as an ultimate. Levi going to go down. They managed to take TN, but that's his job. He's a tank. And now Knight, full health, 
looking for the last man, but Jackie's going to fall down. But I have a feeling that TES can still win this game. Yeah, TES lose two members, but they should be able to at least guarantee this inhibitor on top side. The gold lead now growing over 10,000 at the 20 minute mark. At yeah. the very least, they can't end. Um, so, so that's something. Sure. Uh, but your, it's, your, it's, gl your glass is aggressively half full. To I, I, tr I, really I tried. Like it. Yeah, well, I was going to go into historical facts, such as that Gam, uh, when they did go to the Southeast Asia Games, which they stormed, by the way, yeah. um, they didn't need to take Barons because they were <laughs> winning very hard. And with the pace that this game is on, I, I don't know if top esports are going to need a Baron because Jackie Love ends up dying here, and that's the only reason why we are still in this game. Yeah, we see. I mean, right, they just brute force, and inhi uh, inhibitor turret goes down. But Jackie Love taking a fair bit of damage from the rel, and it sets up for Style to jump in and finish that one off. And honestly, again, had they not fallen so far behind, I feel like BA has been actually having a really solid game on the rel to try to set up for his AD carries. Oh, this is very cute. Katie? Able to get on in there, not able uh, to uh, interrupt the back. So Katie going to make the great escape, Tien. Now going to discover other members of GAM towards this top side as BA, the Magnus Storm is through. There is a lot of money on this team, and my goodness, Jackie Love just tearing style apart. All oh, the steadfast presence again. Tien is so extraordinarily good. It's ridiculous, has been all game long and is going to do so yet again. They're denying the escape over the wall for the Sejuani. And now back to that Baron um, that you mentioned before. Two minutes late uh, on that one. Uh, however, we'll forgive eh. them for it. It's okay. Uh, it's okay for top. I think they're feeling pretty good. 25 stacks on one Magi's, 11 on the Yumi as well. Oh and Wayward just running down Kiaya, but has to be careful. Yeah, I'm trying to turn that one around with the Counter Strike. Okay, but, no, he uh, doesn't. I was yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have to be careful. Yeah, the double boomerang comp certainly working out well here. And uh, Wayward is demonstrating that he is also very strong at this point in the game, even though. Uh, he hasn't been quite as involved as the 8, 2, and 11 Sivir or the 6, 0, 10 Ari in the middle. And I think the unfortunate reality for Gam uh, is that this is a fate that a lot of people that have played against Tess are very, very familiar with. And um, with Inhibitor down, with Baron now being taken and be the gold lead being this big, uh, Jackie Love is approaching four items. I mean, I guess he just went for components because it's like it's not. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to matter. No. I also feel like. For TS at this world, there's a lot of pressure on them to do well. 2020, yeah. they were one of the favorites to yeah. win. It was like them, Dom Juan, and JDG being talked about, but Sooning were the team in the LPL to make it to finals. So Tez definitely wanting to come in strong and have a bit of a statement game up against Camp. Yeah, it was another one of those sort of. It was a sad situation as well, given the fact that it was a lot of LPL over one side of those knockout brackets yeah. and a lot of LCK over the other. We really want to see more of these matchups. We will get more of them as the tournament goes on and see whether Jackie Love is going to be able to continue his dominance against the other teams in the group. But for now, they're going to be pushing down this bottom lane, looking to lock down the final inhibitor that is in front of them. And uh, with this Baron, at 24 minutes, it is extraordinarily difficult for Gam to defend, no matter what the game state was. They're gonna go for a last-ditch effort here, and my goodness, even Mark is doing way too much damage. Knight picks up the double to start this one off. We're going to have one for Jackie Love here as well. Kiaia does manage to get TN, but it's just not going to mean anything this time around. TES are going to destroy Gam Esports here. It is 100% a shellacking in TES's first game here at Worlds in the group stage. Game Esports, I mean, the opposition was definitely a tough ask. It's a tough loss this time, but I think that we're going to see some better things from this team as the tournament goes on. 100%, and especially, right, looking at TS, a lot of people are going to be like, okay, LPL's second seed. Let's remember, they brought JDG to five games in summer playoffs twice. Like, it really feels like that could have been interchangeable in terms of who was coming as a stronger team. So, very hard test for GAM. And, heck, one mistake was kind of what threw it away and allowed TS to just steamroll the rest of the game. And I'm really happy with what you mentioned earlier about people's memory. People remember the highlight moments, the one Jackie Love play that he made that lost in the game. Um, but I think Jackie Love was also a really part three, a really large region of why they were there in the first place, why yeah. he did get he did a great summer five games. Exactly. And also, like if 
Jackie Love hadn't have made that one error, right? We could be talking about the fact that this is TES, the first seed from the LPL, right? Like, we saw the, the best of fives between those two teams, and they were extremely close. Some of the best best of fives of the year, to be perfectly honest. And this is a team that we really need to recognize as almost, like, one of the two top teams uh, it, from the LPL. And it also goes, to sh like, to the point that even though those, like, Dashing in that could that could throw away the game that could cause them losses. Those are the plays that also set TS up for success. Like their aggression is one of their their it's a double edged sword. It's one of their strengths as well as what could be you know their biggest weakness. And yeah. on the other side for Gam, uh, still smiles all around. I think you could expect this coming in as Gam as well, going up against top esports, having seen what this team could do domestically. And uh, I would be shocked if Gam doesn't bounce back in uh, the next couple of games that they will play, this team has shown. I think a lot of resilience, both on the personal and on professional level, so um, maybe if, if it isn't top, that'll be enough. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, top esports just um, looking like, like top esports uh, domestically. Yeah. I mean, there was that one level one play that looked fantastic yeah. from Levi, that but was... unfortunately after that, things certainly went extraordinarily quickly downhill. But uh, I think, like you say, like I think Gamma just super psyched to be back, to be yeah. overly honest. We saw that on their faces, oh. and it's just fantastic to see. And this is honestly the moment where they lost the game. So if you're in the VOD review, coach is like, just don't do this, right? There's not necessarily a lot of the other tape that's relevant here for GAM. However, it's definitely relevant for TES and for the teams that are going to be facing this team in the future. Because, man, I thought that Sivayumi was a late game decision on the bottom side. Uh, not the case, apparently. No, just able to run away with that bottom side. And again, just a lot of, I feel like as the days go on, getting these meta takeaways, things like the poppy. How did he do 30k damage? Like, uh, this, game was, <laughs> this game wasn't long enough for that. I mean, no, no. The, the craziest part, which isn't that crazy, Mark's damage compared to, again, like, Wayward TN towards the top. Mark's literally almost matching Knight in damage. I mean, is it still surprising that Yumi does way too much damage? I don't oh. think it's surprising anymore. You know, I, yeah. it shouldn't be, but it always will I, be. <laughs> I, I was very worried after planes, because last year planes, Yumi had 10% presence. It was a little higher this time around, but then as soon as we got to groups, it was 96 um, I, 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 I'm very sad to report that the same thing seems to be happening here because uh, it's not the most popular of champions. Yeah, I wonder whether it'll just do the get through once a day when people tend to forget just how broken this champion is if you let it through. We saw it happen yesterday uh, with T1 getting the Civil Uni Yumi this time around. Um, Jackie Love and Mark doing uh, similarly um, just repugnant things to their opposition yeah. with the pickups and honestly making it look even more busted. Um, yeah, if 29.7k in a 24-minute game yeah. as Siva is illegal. That yeah. is just 100% not allowed. No, no, no. And again, it just goes to show that strength that Jackie Love brings. He's in a he's in a player that you can count out even if mistakes were coming through in the LPL. Yeah, a phenomenal debut for TES. But we're joining Shocks and Top Esports' own night for our Verizon post-game interview. Take it away. Thank you very much after that performance. Of course, we had to grab the mid laner. A uh, nice congratulations, first up. Secondly, I saw a Champions Q game where you actually ended the game 33, three and eight, and it was versus Kati of the Marines. How much confidence did that give you in this matchup? Thank Definitely, I would like to say that's really built a bit of confidence on me because I really smashed that game. You did, indeed. Um, when it comes to Ari, I was really happy to see you pick her, but she was, of course, nerfed back on 1217 on her charm. But what place do you think she has in the meta right now? Nah,今天也是非常开心，你是拿到阿里这个英雄，但是阿里其实最近在十二点一七版本是有进行一些小小的削弱的，所以说可能当时拿出来的契机是怎么样的呢？ Uh, 
So I just say I would like to prefer this champion. Maybe other mid laners they will not like to choose her, but she will always be the pick that I can pick on stage. Okay, uh, it worked out here very, very well. Now, Knights, when it comes to the LPL, you had another fantastic year, and I think a lot of fans are waiting for that big international performance as well. What are your aspirations at this year's World Championship? 那其实奈特也是在 LPL 有着非常亮眼的一个发挥。那现在来到世界赛的舞台上，来到国际赛事的舞台上，有很多的粉丝期待你能有一个非常亮眼的表现。所以说，你对这次世界赛这个国际大赛的一个展望是什么呢？这次世界赛就我们团队都非常先拿冠军吧，就调整好状态。Our goal for the team is we would like to get that trophy. We would like to be the champion. So we're going to try our best. Wonderful. I uh, have to start with this group, of course. We've now seen the first look at this group with the other two teams, uh, DRX and Rogue as well. What is your general thoughts about the group and the, and the strongest teams that may make it out, uh, including yourself, of course? 那其实今天也是你们这一小组的一个首次亮相嘛。你们打完了比赛，而且之前也有看到另外的两个对手也有打了一个 BOE。所以说到现在来讲，你觉得可能你们组里谁会是那个最强劲的一个对手呢？当然包括你们自己，觉得谁是最强的？嗯，我觉得这组我们肯定是最强的。我感觉肉哥也非常强，就想和肉哥交手一下。I must say. Top esports ourselves is the strongest team in our group, but also Rogue is still a very strong team. So I'm very looking forward to play against them. That'll be a great match. Thank you very much, and thank you as well, Wendy. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, it's our last game of the day: JDG versus Don Juan. Don't go anywhere. Even Mark is doing way too much damage. Nine picks up the double to start this one off. We're going to have one for Jackie Love. TES are going to destroy Gam Esports. Behind 21 epic days of epicness, behind one billion hours of drop jewels, behind every match. Every broadcast, every moment at League of Legends World Championship 2022 is the network capable of making it all happen. The Cisco Network, aka the Realm. Cisco, powering the future of esports. Gives you wings. Uh, uh, yeah. What? Run it, run it, run me my money. Run it, run it, run it, run me my money. Run it, run it, run it, run me my money. Run it, run yeah, it, run yeah. Uh, yeah. Big bad money maker, working hard for all this paper. Check my stats, I'm kind of major. Can't nobody do it greater. I can make your body rock. I'm the boss, I call the shots. Doesn't matter what it costs, baby, no, I got it. I'm forever popping like the hot grease in the pan. Gotta make them understand, I don't never need no man. I'm a I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-C chick. Yeah, you hate a you slick. Got it all, never fall. I'm the one they always call. Spend a stack up at the mall. They say I'm the greatest, y'all. I 
bring all the flavor, yeah. I bring all the heat. If you ain't trying to get money, baby, you can have a seat, yeah. Run me my money. Yeah, run me my money. 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 Uh, uh, yeah, look. They don't want no smoke, cause they know I got the vapor. Keeping all my jewelry on me tighter than the taper. I be on my ball and tip harder than the Lakers. Do nothing for low, I, I, I don't do no favors. Came from the bottom, busting out the bag. I'm the girl you never had, never will and never have. All these suckers know I'm bad, know I'm lit. Make these haters wanna quit. I don't want no things you got, not even a little bit. Face pretty, game tight, make you get some act right. Play me once I catch a flight, money Himalaya height. Got no time to be polite. Get these broke men out my sight. If you got the cash, baby, we can leave tonight. All right? Run me my money. Run me my money. 